What's up, Buck Doug with Dean in the Garage. Today, I want to talk about hypermiling, and I'm really very excited to see what you guys have to say about this down in the squawk boxes. Hypermiling, for those that don't know, is a technique, a style of driving designed to get the most miles per gallon out of your tank of gas. Now, y'all know me, I've gone on record. I prefer smiles per gallon over miles per gallon. I'm not impressed. That don't impress me by anybody who is a slave to that miles per gallon number, I think one of the worst things you can do to yourself, especially if you're a car guy, is drive a boring car. I would never drive like a Camry or a Corolla just for the sake of saving a few dollars. What I choose to drive every day, 60 miles round trip to and from work, is this 20 year old V8 that uh, I don't have to tell you doesn't exactly live up to 2021 uh, efficiency standards. And that can get expensive, especially in a world where gas prices are on the rise and look like they're going to continue to rise for a little bit. So hypermiling is a way that you can have your cake and eat it too, which sounds delicious to me. You can have your 20 year old V8, you can drive it every day, and maybe you can eke a little better gas mileage out of it. For instance, this V8, if I'm not paying attention, I'm stomping it at every red light the way I like to do, it will get 14 miles to the gallon on my daily commute. It's a lot of hills, it's a lot of back roads, uh, and that's not great when you're doing uh, whatever 60 times five is 30, 300 miles uh, a, a week round trip math Christmas amateur hour 300 miles a week if I'm getting 14 miles per gallon on a 20 gallon tank that means I'm filling up on Monday and I'm filling up again at lunch on Friday to make it home uh, that's not super great if a tank of gas is costing 75 bucks conversely when I'm employing these three rules of thumb and two suggestions that I'm about to give you on hypermiling I can eke 19 out of that same commute, which again, it's not an ideal commute for miles per gallon to begin with, but uh, now all of a sudden, five miles per gallon more on a 20 gallon tank, that's almost 100 extra miles, that is substantial. That's beer money, that's money to go buy more big old tires and lift kits for, for my Jeep fleet there. So without further ado, let's dig into it. If you have never uh, hypermiled before, or if you've been hypermiling, this right here is conclusive. I've been compiling this list since back in the day I used to be able to get 25 miles per gallon on the highway out of my four liter WJ uh, using this method three rules of thumb two suggestions here they are number one coasting is king this one is obvious but it is the cornerstone of hypermiling coasting is king you should be coasting anytime you can because you're using less fuel I know that sounds obvious but the next time you're going down a hill Pay attention to it. I'll bet you most of us, even though we're going down a hill and we could be coasting, we'll have our foot on that gas pedal and we'll have it at about quarter throttle for no real reason. It's not really adding anything, but what it is doing is using more of your fuel. So this is the cornerstone. This is the first one we have to talk about. The next rule of thumb, brakes equal waste. Anytime you are hitting the brakes, you are canceling out energy that you used fuel to create. Unless you get your car up to speed by coasting down a hill or you have a bunch of magical fairies pushing it, you used your gas pedal, which used told your motor to turn more liquid dinosaurs into horsepowers, and that's what got you moving. So if you're coming into a turn, and you have to hit your brakes before you get into that turn, what you should have been doing is coasting you know, a couple seconds before you took your foot off the gas uh, in the original scenario, and then you could have coasted into that turn, never canceling any energy, in fact, coasting, gaining more miles per gallon. It's little stuff like that that will get you. So putting together uh, the cornerstone of coast is king and understanding the fact that brakes equal waste, because anytime you're hitting the brakes, you're canceling out energy that it took fuel to make. Find some way, if, if you know a stoplight's coming up, instead of getting right up to it and then hitting your brakes real hard, coast for a few seconds and then, then hit your brakes uh, a little bit less. That coasting is going to improve your miles per gallon. And then the third uh, rule of thumb kind of brings this all together. Plan, man, plan. All right, you got to plan out your route if you know where you're going or at least be hyper aware of what's going on around you. If you got a car in front of you, don't be right on his bumper because if he stops, you're gonna have to stop dead, all right? Nothing hurts your miles per gallon more than having to start from a dead stop. So if you can keep a couple car lengths between you and the jabroni in front of you, when he stops short because he didn't have no blinker on, to turn, instead of having to jam on your brakes and start your momentum all over again, you can coast a little bit till he turns and then pick your speed up again and keep her moving. Uh, same thing goes for like stoplights and stop signs. If you can look up ahead 
and you can see the light is green now, it might be worth it to put your foot into it a little bit, use a little extra fuel instead of coasting to make that light than it would be to have to coast and miss the light and then stop waiting there. Obviously when your car's not moving but it's running, that's zero miles per gallon. You're just burning fuel for no reason. Uh, I'm not saying speed through the light. I'm not saying blow through yellows per se, allegedly, uh, but planning out your route, being aware of your situation, and then using the first two tools of coast is king and uh, brakes equal waste will get you pretty far down the road. I have found that hypermiling is more uh, does more, has a bigger impact, the less efficient your vehicle is to begin with. If you're driving a Prius, yes, you can hypermile. And most of the people who hypermile do drive like Priuses because they're just absolute slaves to miles per gallon. And good for you. If that's your jam, man, I'm not putting you down. It's just not my deal. I prefer whatever. Uh, but if you drive a dirty old 20 year old V8 like this Grand Cherokee here, um, hypermile is going to do quite a lot for you. All right. Now, the two suggestions I have for you. The first one, Install a vacuum gauge because a manifold vacuum gauge is basically a miles per gallon gauge, right? Your manifold vacuum is in almost all situations directly correlates to your instant miles per gallon. Instant miles per gallon is what you're doing right now. Um, like this second, your average, when you, you know, fill up that you're figuring out your average miles per gallon for that whole uh, tank, obviously you take the amount of fuel you just had to put in and divide it by the number of miles and that gives you your miles per gallon. But manifold pressure gives you instant uh, miles per gallon. And when you're uh, coasting, you're moving, but your throttle is closed, you have very high manifold pressure so you have very high my instant miles per gallon uh, obviously when your foot's in it you're trying to beat that friggin toyota through the stoplight um you have very low manifold pressure because your throttle's wide open and you're getting very bad gas mileage this will help you pick up on trends with your vehicle like oh man at 55 this little honey just coasts and is perfectly sitting right there so if you know if i have the option to go 55 or 50 like shoot duck it up another five miles per hour or whatever have you uh, vacuum gauges are great anyway they tell you about the health of your engine. I suggest installing one in every vehicle you have. I haven't gotten around to putting one in here, but that is coming up. I do have a video. I put one in my old Cherokee. I will put a link to that video uh, because I highly recommend a vacuum gauge for the health of your engine, but also they're great miles per gallon gauges uh, to help you figure out if what you're doing in the moment is working. The next one is super simple. Maintain your equipment, all right? If you've got bad tires and your front end suspension components are all worn out and your engine hasn't been tuned up, it's going to be real hard to get maximum MPG out of it. You need to have clean spark plugs, properly gapped. You need to have a clean throttle body. If you have throttle body sensors that can be um, cleaned, like an IAC, idle air controller, clean it. Vacuum leaks are going to hurt you. If your tires are underinflated, it's going to hurt you. Actually, Project Dan has a funny story where I guess he burned through a brand new set of tires on one of his Cherokees back in the day. I think he said it was a 92 because he inflated them to like 45, 50 uh, pounds PSI to try to get the best miles per gallon because the more inflated your tire is, the less rolling resistance, the better your miles per gallon. But if you overinflate them, uh, that does damage you ruin your tires. Uh, it's also unsafe. So, but maintaining your equipment in general, if you have loose tie rods and everything that are adding wiggle to your jiggle there, uh, you're not going to be running down the road, rolling as efficiently as possible. And that's how you hypermile, man. Take that stuff into consideration. I know this is a weird topic for me to talk about on a Jeep channel, on a channel where I've said time and time again, I don't care about your miles per gallons, but it does kind of seem like we may be paying like five dollars for a gallon of gas and as much as i love you ruby uh i'm not sure if i'm gonna be able to afford that i'm actually uh in the market right now for a commuter car to drive sometimes i'm always there are gonna be days i need to take the v8 i love driving a wj uh but uh right now i'm looking at here's another one here's a freebie this wasn't on the original list manual transmission in most cases is going to be more efficient than automatic now modern transmissions are pretty darn good the automatics uh cvts as much as i despise them are I mean, they're soulless, but they are very efficient. But if you're driving an older vehicle, if you can get it in five speed, uh, but hypermiling mostly takes into account that you, you have a vehicle and now you want to figure it out. You're not buying a vehicle to hypermile per se. But if you can find a manual transmission, that's what I'm going to do for my commuter car. I'm looking at a five speed Patriot perhaps. Uh, 
I, <clears throat> or a Subaru. Uh, they're very efficient. It had to be like 04 back. The new ones are crap. But if anybody has a suggestion on a good uh, commuter car for a guy like me, monkey with a toolbox, I need to be able to put a snar blower in the back or a broken lawnmower for sure. Uh, let me know what you guys would suggest. Maybe a five speed Ranger. Uh, I'd also obviously love to know your uh, other techniques for hypermiling if you've had any experience with it or maybe you don't give a darn. I was talking to Dave Random about this and he was like, buddy, no offense. I don't give a mouse's fart in church about hyper mountain i'm never going to i was like cool cool bud so uh, maybe you don't care at all you'll pay to not have to deal with that kind of crap so let me know uh all that stuff down there in the squawk boxes definitely looking to hear christmas amateur hour definitely looking forward to hear your suggestions for a commuter car and other uh, methods of hypermyelin. Uh, if you like the video, like the video, that's common sense. Subscribe to the channel. Maybe even go and check out our website, monkeywithatoolbox.com. Until next time. I thought something was going to come. I don't have anything. I'm just going to do what I always do. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>